my dear people you're welcome to the channel so today i have um, the former ndc md joy nunie has finally testified before the house of refs okay so mind you she did not do this physically present at the house okay at the house committee but it was done virtually via online okay so you do now considering what um happened the ugly events that happened at her house some days ago so i guess you know that was why she couldn't be there physically but however in her testimony she revealed quite a whole lot i mean a whole whole lot okay so in a bit i'm gonna let you guys see the full video but before then have you been watching videos on this channel and you haven't subscribed uh, uh please do me that big favor by subscribing to the channel okay and also please turn on the notification bell so that you're quickly informed at every single time i upload a video on this channel okay and for every one of you who has subscribed thank you so much i really appreciate it once the forensic audit to be discredited i ensured with the help of real big consultant everyone is talking about it's not the forensic audit he does not have a lot. Only the, is to gather when all the forensic auditors have gotten all the data and all the reports from field, they will put it together and then give it to the lead consultant who will do the reporting, the conclusion, you know, putting it together. That's just his role. He is not the one going to carry out any forensic audit. Now, let me look at the case of the forensic auditor. This Bashir and Co. So I will be asking to tell them to give you evidence that they have ever carried out a forensic audit before in accordance with the provisions of the Public Procurement Act, which requires that for any consultant contractor, they must show evidence that in the past three years or thereabout, they have carried out that. Second issue with the lead consultant. In our document, which is with the BP, from the, um, the um, forensic auditors, then they would now consultant. Can I now stand before this committee to say that the lead consultant has been procured? My answer would be no. Why not? It is true that an, uh, a certificate, a due process certificate of no objection was indeed given to the NDDC for the procurement of the lead consultant. Based and the certificate shows, which I have sent to you, of course, that certificate of it, that due process certificate of no objection, says source of funding. You remember that you cannot give any approval, you cannot procure any consultant where the National Assembly, it is a criminal offense to procure any consultant without the appropriation made by the National Assembly. In this case, because it will be uh, anticipatory budgeting, in this case, has the National Assembly appropriated funds as stated on the due process, uh, uh, due process certificate of no objection for 2020 budget? There is no appropriation. The 2020 budget has not even been considered, it has not even been discussed, not to mention being passed. Now, when I said in my press briefing that the 2020 budget had not been passed, they ran before you people on Friday or Monday sometime, some days ago, and they could not defend the budget. Therefore, the world will agree with me that the 2020 budget is not passed one of the issues of insubordination because the act says that if i commit any offense five years imprisonment without an option under false pretenses knowing that the 2020 budget had not been passed and also knowing that it was criminal and anticipatory which i want to say was one of the reasons why obasanjo got the procurement, public procurement act enacted. Now, in getting that, that procurement, procurement activity, in their report, they stated that out of every hundred cobo that the federal government lost in, 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 in corruption, 
60% and 60 kobo was from procurement fraud. They therefore asked that immediately the National Assembly must enact a procurement um, act. And there was no statute for that before now. So now that is your own act, an act of the National Assembly. So we must ensure that that act, that we get the, um, the National Procurement Council established immediately to be chaired by the Minister of Finance the Minister of, um, of um, the, the Minister of um, Justice and Attorney General is also a member. The MPA, there's a list in the Procurement Act. That is what will give credit. Now, let me tell you what would have happened if the National Procurement Council is there. In going to apply for an approval for the procurement of the lead council, they would have found out that it was wrong because it was clearly stated that it should be from the 2020 mm. budget. Now, that approval cannot be applied until the 2020 budget is passed. Therefore, that's that position of the, um, um, the 2020. However, they have said that they have paid the lead consultant. And in paying that lead consultant, my own recommendation would be that he returns the money until the budget has been passed. And he has shown everything. Okay, uh, Doctor, uh, Doctor, Doctor Nene. The second, no, 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 Mr. Chairman. The issue is that everybody in Nigeria has been deceived that the procurement is going on. Now, it's very, um, that the um, forensic audit is going on. It's a major issue. I want to say here, and I'm ready to stand and tell all Nigerians, if they find out that the forensic audit is going on, every testimony and allegation that I have made, and I've submitted that to you, and I think DPP has come to testify, they got a certificate of no objection for the procurement of the forensic auditors. These forensic auditors are the ones that are supposed to be carrying out the forensic audit. In that list, there is no auditing of those on that list are the, the following. One minute. Because this in the, the document that I've sent to Abuja, I had to tell them to please help me check um, and get the list of that. The companies, the nine companies on that list are Emma and Young, Emma and Young, GE Osage and Co, Sony Oko and Co, Abuji E O Ebuji and Co, Alliance. Consulting and Digital Solutions, Dada Idris and Co, E Field Associate Services, Eight Discovery Cycle Professional, Nine BBC Professional. None of our major auditing firms in Nigeria is on that list. Yet we have been told several times that internationally reputable these are on that list. There's none. That is one. Two, can I say that the forensic auditors have been um, procured? My answer is no. Getting that um, certificate of no objection, it's highly defective. The certificate itself, I will, I will cancel it right away. In the source of funding, BPP failed, refused, and neglected to state the appropriation where the funding of these um, forensic auditors will be gotten from. So the day there, they did not say which budget. What you see on that um, um, certificate of no objection is the amount. Has it been approved by the Federal Executive Council? No, it hasn't. Does NDDC have an existing budget? No, they don't. Their budget elapsed, I think, 31st of May or thereabouts. I'm not sure which time it expired. But right now, because he has sold a dummy to Nigeria that everybody, including members of the National Assembly, are afraid, and they are the ones pushing me to say that they are afraid of the forensic audits going on. I challenge him to bring any of these nine forensic auditors that have been approved by 
the Federal Executive Council. He said on television that um, he had stepped down his memo. Even last week, to he stepped down his memo. That was the memo that was supposed to be for the procurement of the um, forensic auditor. So if you have not gotten your approval, you have not written to, to the, uh, you have not appointed them officially. Where then is the forensic audit going? Why are we as a country being deceived? I challenge him to the greatest scam in this country. Uh, Honorable Nigeria Dr. Dr. Joy, that the forensic audit is going on. Dr. Joy, uh, yes, from some of the submissions we had, um, I think the summer... I want to say also that they have not asked for the letter from the Auditor General, which is a requirement, a constitutional requirement, that they must ask the, uh, the Auditor General for the list of auditors. Did they get these names from the auditors for such a credible forensic audit that is everything for the president. This is a legacy project for Mr. President in his anti-corruption work. Okay, uh, Dr. Joy, may I ask you this question um, yes. about the forensic. From one of our submissions we had earlier, uh, we learned that the sum of 641 million error was used by the NDDC for media support for the forensic. Uh, across the nine states of the Niger Delta. So, which was um, paid to Clearpoint Communications Limited. Are you aware okay. of this? I don't know. I don't think that the forensic audit to Clearpoint, I don't know Clearpoint. No, no. I said, I said media support, contract for media support for the forensic audit. Okay. That, is, that which, wasn't in my time. Okay. MG. No. I don't know anything about Clearpoint. I don't know anybody. Okay. The only thing that I paid for during my time was directly to Vanguard. Um, part of the things that gave me for his subordination was that I refused to carry out a verification exercise in the ninth state. All Nigerian contractors will bear me witness that the verification exercises took place in the ninth Niger Delta states. I did not need to give anybody 600 and something million naira for anything. The, the verification exercises took place. Now the chairman of that verification, this is important. The chairman, I appointed and inaugurated the, um, the project verification um, committee. In that, in the memo against me, they said that I chose to set up a committee made up of nearly 100 people. Yes, we did. We sent them to different states, our staff, to go and carry out those. The chairman of that committee was Dr. Kairi. He had nominated Mr. Eyoite as one of the nominees, um, one of his nominees on the um, committee. And I said, you can't. Because Mr. Eyoite cannot be a judge in his own case, even though the minister asked you to put him on. Why? Because he was the one responsible for emergency contract awards. And so we could not send him. There's a letter which I've also sent to you on that that was sent to him. This verification exercise, the next day, Dr. Cairo never participated in that exercise. When they came back, they wanted to give a special verification to some contractors who refused. And this is important, sir. In your investigation of this um, corruption going on in NGDC, this might help you. What did we find out in that, um, in that um, exercise? One, contracts were given out to some companies that were not registered. Some companies got registered after they were awarded the contract. Two, in some cases, contracts were um, give, awarded before the designs were given. So you found out that most of the projects were abandoned, which is like what you have in Port Harcourt, at the old Port Harcourt General Hospital that is near the Civic Center. You see a big building there, and the contractor says he couldn't finish it because by the time the design came out, he couldn't do. How do you give a contract awarded without a design? 
And the most notorious one was that during that exercise, we saw like there were situations where you had 10 to 15 companies having IPCs for the same project. So road Peter on street five, two kilometers. There will be 15 companies that have been awarded that same contract. How do you, how do you afford that? So those are the issues that we need to look at. Those are the contracts that we look. So when you say these, these contracts were given, now I want to say something. Files got missing. Files got missing when we started this verification. I had sent out a memo that no files should be taken out of the commission. You'll be glad to hear, sir, that as soon as I sent out that memo, files were taken out by the EDP and the EDF. No, Dr. Dr. Joy, Dr. Joy, please. Yes. You, you, the issue of the file you raised now is a key issue. Uh, you, yes. Because of our time, you said files were missing. I mean, they, yes. so they took files or something. Yeah. Can you I want to say that if you look at the, the um, um, Nigeria Criminal Code Act, that the government and um, all those documents, when you steal the government's document, it is a criminal offense. So those files were taken. And at that peace meeting that I've been talking about, I raised the issue of the missing files. And I confronted Mr. Fabio that you collected files, you told the EDF and EDP to take out these files at the weekend. I am assuming that these files are for contracts that when he was governor, when he was senator, and of course the 30, the 30 contracts that he was awarded in the Stilton and Water High Center when he became the minister. Sorry, who awarded, who awarded the 30 contracts? You spoke about 30 contracts now. It who? was Chief Sese who was in charge is for what I sent and the student, which is why you, 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 Sam, you were part of those that asked for that thing not to be paid. Thank you. So you know about it. Uh, because the document was on my table, and I can tell you, Sam, that you saved Mr. Aqua, Mrs. Aquagaga from making payment. What is this distilting about? The stilton is moving sand inside the water. Does it make sense? If you push the sand, the water will bring it back. Is that what you give a contract for? <laughs> so he was awarded 30 of those contracts. Of one how, how much was, was the average cost of a distill of um, each of the contracts? Um, I, I'm under oath. I don't want to say what I'm not sure of specifically. Okay. Um, Dr. Records Dr. Joy. And those files, those files, <clears throat> Mr. Fabio admitted that he had called them to return the files. When I came back, I've also sent you the letter that I wrote to the two directors, um, executive directors, to return those files. It's a criminal offense to have collected those files. And before I go, sir, when I refused to do a lot of things, I have no reason to start looking for blood money because my last child is in final year law. I've got four children. I just wanted to write my name in diamonds. So when I refused to, Senator Fabio says I have poverty mentality. How can I have poverty mentality? My father is Senator Nunez. Why would I have poverty mentality? Even on my own, I think I've tried. I refused. He said the only condition for us to work together, if not, he was going to remove me, was if I um, take the oath, go with him to Uyo to take the oath. It's very important because if I alert on television, and I don't say this because it is in course of my work, so it forced me to try to take an oath. It's seven years imprisonment. Me, I'm calling on the police to investigate that. Calling me when I refuse to take that oath. And I, I need to repeat this on that oath. At the meeting in the villa, before Mr. Sadiki Yaba, who is the SA domestic to Mr. President, and Alaji Mekam, is the AO of the villa. Akwabio asked me to take an oath if we wanted to reconcile. 
Unfortunately, I had not told these people about him telling me three times before. He was the one wow. that now brought it up. And let me say this. The reason why he has been unable to write on any paper that he never told me to take any vote. That was a press conference that it never happened. But till today, none of them have ever denied that it didn't happen. Okay, so, so Dr. Joy. Uh, no, sir, the old issue is, 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 is criminal and it's very important. It's very important, sir. We cannot, it's a criminal offense because if I had taken that oath under the Nigerian Criminal Code Act, it would have been life imprisonment for Senator Akpabi. Now that I didn't take the oath, it is, I think, about five or seven years imprisonment for even telling me to take the oath. If I had taken the oath, I would have gone, I think, about 19 years if I had taken that oath. The only excuse that the Criminal Code Act says is if within two months of taking that oath, I swear to an affidavit that I, um, I, I was forced under, I, was, I, I took that oath under duress. So me, I'm calling on the Nigerian police so please investigate and charge Senator Akpabio in accordance with the provisions of the Criminal Code Act. One, for stealing the files of the NDDC for the businesses that and contracts that message that he sent to me from his mobile phone saying that I'm Ogoni and that my people have not allowed um, then to take oil and he said one Mr. Etu who he wanted me to appoint and I refused to be my SAU sent it to him and he said in his words he who lives by the gun shall die by the gun now in the Nigerian Criminal Code Act it says any threat on a traditional chief I am a, on me and my people, life imprisonment. I want the Nigerian police to also take this up for threatening me. I've also submitted to you, and I'm hoping that today okay. I will send in my own petition to the Nigerian police. Okay, Dr. Joy. Um, that, yeah. Dr. Joy, can you, some few questions, please. Can you yes. confirm to Nigerians, can you confirm to this honorable committee that in your tenure you spent only 8 billion naira action? What we have um, as expenditure till date from um, your time as IMC is 81.5 billion. So are you saying of this 81.5 billion naira, 8 billion was what you spent? Yes, 8 billion on the two bridges on the medical equipment which I handed directly over to the governors, to the governors. I rejected some of the medical equipment. And I want to say this, and it's very, very important. I submitted that to you. This payment of, for, the, for the medical equipment, Mr. Chair. Go on, please. Please go on. The payment for the medicals. Senator Akpabio and I've sent you that, and we have at the commission, minutes of uh, it, none of them knew. I was not responsible for the warehouses. The warehouses are under the EDFA, which is admin. Now, Senator Aquabio says, go and get a contract. Get a contract, five billion, five billion. I say, sir, I cannot do that contract. We have those things in stock. Why would I award any other contract for the five billion? The whole idea was to use this as part of that contract. I have the documents. When we, how can I award contract for what we have in store? I said I will not. So we held a management meeting where we all agreed that is over our my threshold. So, Madam, you will write to Senate to Akpabio himself. Let him write to us to award this emergency contract. We wrote to him, I've submitted it to you also. We wrote to him, no reply, because he doesn't write anything for you. You can imagine if 
I will spend eight billion. Okay. I'm uh, happy that you doc, have a doc, CPN and payment. Doctor and, Joy, uh, you spoke about a uh, certain amount of money in the dollars account before you left, that you did not change the money from the uh, NDDC's um, uh, account to Naira before you left. Can you tell this committee how much precise, how much did you leave in uh, uh, the dollar account before you left? How much did you have? I, since I'm under oath, I do not want thing that will put me in disrepute that I said this, the whole world is watching. I cannot be specific. However, I want to tell the whole world that I, I did not touch two naira, two dollar, one dollar. Okay, that is that is well noted. Then, what is, did you spend? Did you pay any money for the forensic during your tenure? Sorry. Did you pay any money for the forensic audit during your tenure? I did not pay any money for the forensic audit because from my time there has been no forensic audit till today. I did not pay one naira for the forensic audit. Okay. One naira Dr. has Joy, been paid by me for the Dr. Joy, audit. you spoke about the verification exercise that was carried out. How much did the verific verification exercise cost the commission under your leadership? I do not know. The only thing that was paid out was accommodation for the people. The did you engage consultants? Did you? Yeah, I, I, I cannot. Say. No, I, I, I cannot say. No, did you engage consultants for the purpose of the work? No, 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 no consultant. The only people that went with us were the police and the DSS. I did not engage any consultants to carry out the verification. Okay. Um, there is this allegation from some of the submissions that we have and in the media and from some stakeholders that any payment that uh, you made or NDDC made, that 20% must be collected from the contractors. Is there any face to that? I cannot um, say that. I will not say that any payment that was made by me, um, Senator Fabio collected. No, no, no. I mean you. You have been alleged now, not, not Senator Fabio. You as oh. Dr. Joy Nune, that for okay. contractors that were paid, 20% were remitted back to you as kickback. How true is that? It's not possible. If I wanted, it's not, it did not happen. No contractor gave me 20%. And I want to say this. If they wanted to buy for me, I did it. In fact, Senator Aquebio said that I have demystified the position of MD because I personally used to go to the building materials uh, market myself <laughs> to go to buy. I did not take 10 naira from any of those contractors. As for those ones, everybody talks about um, 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 those ones for the medical equipment. It's important to tell you why I even agreed to pay those people. Now, when we went to the warehouses and found out that some of those things in the warehouses had expired, we had emergency boots that were warehouses for like 10 years. Boots. We had trucks. I insisted that these things should be distributed in the ninth state. These contractors now stopped us on the Emeka um, They stopped us that morning from distributing. We are giving the one for River State. We are giving the one for Abia. When we were going in there, these contractors, I only know one of the contractors. I only know only one of those contractors. All the other contractors were paid. I've never seen okay. them in Do my Dr. life. Dr. Joy, that is, well, that is well noted. Finally, finally, Dr. Joy, as a former acting managing director of NDDC, and he testified before this committee, what are your recommendations to this committee for the way forward of NDDC? Well, firstly, I would like to see the forensic audit really take place. We write in accordance with the provisions of the Constitution to Mr. President, um, to, sorry, the Auditor General, to give you a list of certified forensic auditors in Nigeria. Um, so that we can get them 
quickly to carry out a proper forensic audit of the NDDC. And mind you, the audit is not just financial. It is supposed to look through the personnel because in NDDC, I found out that for a commission that is involved in structural things like roads and all of that, they didn't have enough engineers. I don't know if they had more than 10 certified engineers. It's unbelievable. Where we're talking about billions of Naira being spent. We didn't have that. So we have to look at a staff audit as well. It's very important. The staff audit to put square holes, square pegs into square holes. Secondly, my recommendation is that Mr. President should please ask or direct the immediate establishment of the National Procurement Council. Mm -hmm. Emergency. That, that is the first thing, even before we talk about the forensic audits. That would help Nigeria save so much money in terms of fraud and corruption in its ministries or commissions. I believe that the Minister of Finance is very well qualified. And the Attorney General, I know him personally. He is very, very qualified. And I know that if we do that, we we'll save at least out of the 60% that goes into procurement fraud, um, 60 Kobo, we might be able to save 40, you know, Kobo. From your oversight functions would have to be, um, you have to help the new management that would come in. You need to supervise them and make sure they act only in accordance with the laws. I'll give you an example. To Senator Akwadio, he felt that the president had delegated all his powers in the NDDC Act to him, which wasn't true. The president only delegated one power, which is over policy. But he felt that he also had the power of the board. You heard him at, at the, at the, uh, on a rise saying most of these um, directors that he removed, they, they are very lucky. They are still there. They are paying them even if they are on leave. The question is, on what basis did the lead consultant write or send those directors on leave or on, um, on compulsory retirement? Based on what reports, since there's no forensic auditor, is the consultant or the minister, do they have the powers for, for, for directors over level 14 to send them on leave or take any disciplinary action against them? The only power to promote over level 14 lies the Civil Service Commission, the chairman. So we need you, the, the committee, has to make sure that anywhere that this the, 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 the minister supervising or it must be in accordance with the act. There must be a reorientation for the minister for supervising. We didn't really have this sort of problem from the records that I saw when the NDDC was under the office of the SGF. Yeah. Because he knew that this was the, was the right thing to do. My recommendation would honestly be that the NDDC be taken back to the office of the SGF. Because the SGF is very, very busy. He won't go out of his way to start looking for NDDC money. But what we see here is that for Senator Akwadi, who has been governor, he still has in his head that you, he's still a governor, you just do this, you just do that. His, his budget is like 20 billion. How do you want him to service uh, a... a, a, a a, 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 to supervise um, a commission that is talking about hundreds of billions. It, 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 it can't work again. So we need to look at all of those things. And but what happened yesterday, just for you to help to raise this issue, when I was brought in to NDDC, and at NDDC, I want to make this clear, Senator Akwabio, when he saw that I was not cooperating, refused for them to give me an official bed. I want to say before Nigerians, I didn't have an official bed. When I first came in, there were two bulletproof cars 
that I was used to. I said, Madam, you don't know me. I said, no, I said, I'm one of your contractors. I said, how are you? And he said, I'm the one that gave you the car that you are using. I said, what? Using a contractor's car? And I'm supposed to superintend over a forensic audit? I called Senator Fabio. I said, sir, you won't believe that that car that I'm using, I thought it was from the commission, that it belongs to so-so and so. He said, no, don't worry, the man is a very good man. I asked him to. I just kept quiet. When I got back to Potter, I returned the car. The second car to this day from another contractor is still at the mechanic. In fact, after what happened yesterday, I've asked them to go and collect it so that I can keep it safely in case they ask and they don't say because I wrecked the tent or um, they were sent to my office by a fabulous former ADC when he was governor of Aquaibon State. I didn't know that. So, if I went to Peter's house, if it's a perceived enemy of Senator Aquabio, he will be told that I am right now in Peter's house. i give you an example. I went to see Mrs. Silva, who has been my longtime friend for over 20 years. Senator Aquabio said, yes, you went to see, Senator, um, you went to see Mrs. Silva. Do you know the husband said this at back and that, that, that? You must not go there again. <laughs> I was at the airport. They told me, um, one Takuku's driver told me that, ah, oh, madam, Mrs. Amechi is inside the airport. I walk in to go and greet Mrs. Amechi. Before I get to the gate, Senator Aquabio calls me, yes, you went to have a meeting with Mrs. Amechi because you want to plan against my presidential. I was being monitored. Now, three of the police people that came yesterday, where three that was working with me in NDDC. So what happened yesterday, I did badge in like that um, to come to, to pick me up. But I'm very grateful. I'm very, very grateful because this is the modus operandi that happened in Aquaibon State. So we Nigerians must please Speak up because they could have taken me away yesterday. It's just by grace that I'm alive. Uh, so Dr. I'm very uh, Dr. Joy, thank you. Th th thank you very much for your time. Uh, we've taken your testimony. We'll wait for the uh, hard copy of your presentation to enable us to work further on it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. So that's it my dear people and if you have watched up until now thank you so much for watching i really appreciate that okay but then a very quick reminder okay please if you haven't subscribed to the channel please go ahead and subscribe to the channel and if you have not turned on the notification bell kindly turn on that notification bell okay and if you haven't given the video a thumbs up please go ahead and give it a thumbs up and please share this video like i earlier said please share 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 all right so that said thank you so much bye bye see you in the next video